one of the uh, things that you also talk about is our circulatory system, and I think you have an interesting hypothesis on uh, that and how it relates to today's health conditions. Can you talk about that? Oh, yes. I, I definitely think that the blood circulation is the key. It's the cornerstone of our health. Having good blood circulation is so important, and uh, maintaining it depends upon sulfate. Sulfate is something that I've looked into early and long. I, I figured out the sulfate connection very early with, with um, autism. Autistic brain actually is associated with a low sulfate in, this, in the cerebral spinal fluid. That's been shown post-mortem. And, um, and animals that have um, impaired ability to sulfate these sugar molecules in the brain, rat model, these rats have all features of autism. So they've sort of sulfate is, autistic kids also waste sulfate. They, they waste it through the kidney, and they have low sulfate in the blood. So all of this is an indicator of some kind of issue with sulfate. And um, I worked out a theory that cholesterol sulfate is synthesized in the skin in response to sunlight. Which, and this is a really, really important thing that happens. That's the way that the animals, animals have been able to capture sunlight and make use of it, hold on to that energy in the sunlight and make use of it through making this sulfate anion, sticking it onto cholesterol and shipping it out. And this ends up being a major source of the supply of both cholesterol and sulfate to all the tissues but especially to the blood, and the blood really, really depends on cholesterol sulfate to be healthy, particularly the red blood cells. So the red blood cells produce lots of cholesterol sulfate, and I think they do it in response to sunlight, or they will do it better if they get sunlight. They need that, that light energy. And then they use the sulfate, those anions sticking around the red blood cell gives it a negative charge. And so when these two red blood cells are negatively charged, they repel each other, they, just like magnets. They're like magnets, they won't stick together. If they don't have enough sulfate, they'll stick together you'll get blood clots and you'll have all these problems with thrombosis. So this is also then a source of, you know, ends up with things like heart attacks because you've got some kind of blockage from a, from a blood clot. Of course, the platelets are the same thing. Platelets, of course, are going to also glom together. They also make cholesterol sulfate. And uh, they're sort of the first line of defense with um, when there's a crisis, you know. So both the red blood cells and the platelets need that negative charge that they're going to get from the sulfates that they can't make uh, if they don't get enough sunlight. And the nasty thing is that the enzyme that makes the sulfate is a cytochrome P450 enzyme. And glyphosate has been shown to disrupt cytochrome P450 enzymes. So you can expect that glyphosate in the blood is going to mess up the red blood cells' ability to make the cholesterol sulfate, is going to make them not sufficiently negatively charged, and then cause all the rest of the problems. And I think they also depend on the negative charge to move, because interestingly enough, the blood um, has a uh, pH gradient on the artery side versus the vein side the pH is different, such that there's going to be a charge, positive charge. So the negatively charged cell is, again, like a battery. It's attracted to the positive charge of the vein, which will help to propel it through the capillary. So this makes it easier for the red blood cells to get through the capillaries if they have enough negative charge and if there's enough of a charge gradient between the arteries and the veins. So the blood is always trying to maintain all these, these charge issues, which is hard to do right. if you don't have enough sulfate. So I think there's a sulfate crisis going on that's triggering all these diseases. And the, the diseases can be explained very simply. And this is things like arthritis or Alzheimer's or various gut disorders. You know, um, All of them can be explained by the, the, basically there's an inflammation going on in that tissue. Say if you have an inflamed knee, you've got a, uh, arthritis in the knee, um, the inflammation is causing it to attack the extracellular matrix where there's lots of sulfate. And it actually breaks off those sulfated molecules around the knee joint in order to get them into the blood to save the blood. But meanwhile, the knee's getting destroyed. So you're basically sacrificing some organ for the sake of the blood. And it's essential to do that because if the blood doesn't flow, you're dead. So somebody's got to bail out the blood. And then depending on your genetics, it's going to decide whether it's your brain or whether it's your knee or whether it's your, your stomach, you know, your, your gut. So uh, I think that's a very simple explanation. Everyone is really appreciating, the researchers are appreciating inflammation is the cause of all disease. I mean, that's sort of a mantra these days. But no one says, well, what's the cause of inflammation, you know? The thing is you need the inflammation in order to get the superoxide to make the sulfate. So there's both the problem of being able to make the sulfate and then to be able to distribute it. And in fact, cancer is like that, too. If you look at breast cancer, and I have an article that I wrote in the Western Price, um, news, uh, their journal, uh, called Cancer to the Rescue. Uh, and very, very interesting when you look at breast cancer and what it's doing and how it's working. 
and it turns out, of course, it's inflamed, you know, and it's got, um, and it's using that superoxide to make sulfate, and it's a, uh, sticking the sulfate onto an estrone, so it's basically a, a using estrogen uh, to make estrone sulfate, which is very, very similar to cholesterol sulfate, and it makes lots of this stuff, and it ships it out, which is helping to, to solve the cholesterol sulfate deficiency problem. It's also making all this extracellular matrix, which contains these separate uh, sulfated uh, sugar molecules, so the the tumor is making all this extra matrix, you know, making it all the time, it keeps making it, and then it's got all these things that are attacking it and taking it away. So it has, to, it's like a factory, it keeps making it, and then it keeps getting eroded. It's getting eroded by these things that are attacking the matrix. So those erosions are, are allowing it to fill the blood. So the, the, so the tumor is supplying the blood with sulfate. So you can see all of these diseases, you can frame them all that way, that the purpose is to provide the blood with sulfate because without the sulfate the blood will be dead and then we'll all be dead. So that's the way I see all, all diseases. All these modern diseases that are going up due to the sulfate deficiency which again is due to the glyphosate and that's for many reasons which I've gotten into in my papers. It's not, um, it's complex science a little bit but you have all these sulfate carriers uh, one of which is all these products of the shikimate pathway. So because the shikimate pathway is disrupted uh, you are much less able to transport sulfate across through all the tissues because glyphosate has messed up the production of the molecule that can do that. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with cholesterol. Gly glyphosate's messed up the sulfate synthesis because that's a cytochrome P450 enzyme. Glyphosate also messes up uh, sulfate activation because it's been shown that it suppresses other enzymes that are connected there and it prevents vitamin D activation and vitamin D protects from sulfate wasting through the kidney. So there's like all these different ways in which glyphosate messes up sulfate. So I think that's actually the key problem. The sulfate and of course the manganese, both of those. Mm -hmm. And they might even be connected because I think the sulfate and the manganese bind together. And then that's a way to distribute the manganese over the body. So when you don't have enough sulfate, you can't distribute the manganese. So it's all connected. Mm, I see that. It's really interesting. Yeah. It's fascinating science.